In this video, we're going to be looking at the new EV Next, which is in Blender 4.1 Alpha. Now, for those of you that don't know, EV Next is a large update to the EV render engine, the real time render engine of the Blender software. And it's very, very exciting because it adds a lot of new features, including a ray tracing basically one click button that replaces the irradiance volume from this version of EV. So currently this is the 3.6.4 blender that I'm currently showing just to kind of give you a bit of background as to what EV looks like out of the box. Uh, I haven't really done all that much to make this scene look pretty other than just add a few vertex colors here on this material. Uh, as you can see, the red, green, and blue do not bounce onto this object out of the box. I want to make that very, very clear. We can get Eevee to have bounce light, but it's difficult. And when it comes to animation, it becomes even more difficult. And that's really where Eevee's strength lies. It is in animation. So if we can't readily and very easily add realistic lighting to our scenes and animations it, it does detract from the experience somewhat so it is good to see that the developers are looking at this problem which is fantastic so let's actually just jump right in to 4.1 alpha and i'll put a link in the description below that will link to the download page for that and take a look at the new EV Next, shall we? So here is EV Next. Now, out of the box, you might think to yourself, it doesn't look all that different, but hang on. If we look over here, we can see there's this blue tinge occurring. And over here, there's a nice red tinge as well from this wall here. So that already is really different. And that's caused by the ray tracing in EV Next. So if we look over here under the render properties, we have this new drop down called ray tracing. Very, very fancy. Also, if we look up here, render engine is set to EV Next. Now, I should note that when you download 4.1 Alpha as of today, you will not have this option out of the box. What you need to do is you need to go to Edit and Preferences, and you want to come to Interface first and then you want to make sure that your developer extras is turned on after which you want to come down to experimental and turn on ev next and then make sure that you save your preferences and reset blender by restarting when you've done that you should have the ev next option in the render engine list as you can see we can switch between them and there is a bit of a difference when we do look at that that is beautiful, utterly beautiful. It really just brings to life a lot of this scene. I see this is going to be used very extensively for interiors especially. But I do want to put forward that it isn't so much a, a groundbreaking feature, to be frankly honest with you. It's been around in the likes of Lumen and Unreal Engine for quite a while. Redshift RT's already essentially done this, although RT is a little bit slower compared to Eevee, I'll be honest. And Brigade looks to blow everything out of the water if it eventually releases. Um, but why I think that this is important is because it lays the groundwork for ray tracing going into the future for the Eevee render engine, which is my favorite render engine. You could use those other render engines. You could. But the big problem with those is A, they're either still in very experimental stages or B, they're not in Blender. And I really like using Blender for a lot of my work because it's, I like the interface. I like how it works. I like the shortcuts. So workflow wise, I would rather stay in Blender for as long as possible. So it is great to see that there is the ray tracing mentality being brought over to Eevee, uh, it does have a long way to go, unfortunately. As you can see, it's still screen space. So as we change our view somewhat and the blues disappeared, we no longer get any blue here. Same with the red. 
So it is still technically screen space, but it's now just a one-click solution over what we would traditionally have to have done in the old EV. If we jump back over to old EV, just to kind of show you, we can get old EV looking just as good. So let me just turn on my fake lighting. So here we go. Here's my fake lighting. All that I'm using is just a few lights here to emulate the bounce light. That works really well, especially for animations. This is probably the route you would want to go with the EV. Alternatively, we could use irradiance volumes as well. So if I turn on the irradiance volume and then bake indirect lighting, you'll see that we get our indirect lighting here and it's baking, it's looking nice. Uh, but as you're probably seeing, it does take a little while. So the fact that in EV Next, and that's really what I see this feature replacing. This is replacing the irradiance volume. It's a one-click solution to the irradiance volume that affects the world, which is very, very nice. Now, the irradiance volume does look better at this stage, but we have to have that long waiting period. And getting it working with animations is a little bit, well, a little bit. It, it's not a great workflow, to be perfectly honest with you. And then, of course, we have the unreal engine as well that we should probably bring into the forefront because unreal doesn't run into these problems so if we come over here and we put our camera uh, in front of the red we still see the red if we put it in front of the blue if i can control my camera a little bit better we can still see the blue and if we put it green we can still see a little bit of that green so it, it's important to understand that we've got a long way to go in blender until we're you know getting to to lumen levels uh lumen looks fantastic my biggest problem with lumen is that it's in unreal i personally don't like the unreal workflow very much and What's worse, and this is a topic that we're going to be talking about soon, the new pricing changes for Unreal for filmmakers. And don't you worry, that is something that I will cover. So stay tuned for that and make sure that you ring that bell just in case if you're interested in my thoughts. But that's going to be really interesting to see what happens in regards to the Unreal ecosystem for filmmakers when that hits next year. But as you can see, Lumen looks fantastic. Yeah, I could clean this up a little bit more and give it a bit more um, thickness here and kind of get rid of that lighting and light it a bit better. But, you know, out of the box, Lumen is just really nice for a real-time render engine. Like, Lumen is faster than EV and arguably can look better too. There are some situations, for example, glass, where EV just is so much easier to work with than Lumen. There are pros and cons to both. But yeah, I just wanted to update you on that little tidbit about EV Next. I hope that that makes you excited and really sort of inspires you to download Blender Alpha and just play around with it. See what you can make. I would love to see it. You can, of course, at me at polyfable official or you can check out my website polyfable.com if you're interested in telling stories with blender and other softwares i have a whole training course on getting you up to speed with this technology even if you're just a beginner and you've never touched it before so i highly suggest heading over there if you're interested in telling stories so go out there and create something with ev next